let, let's talk footwear. So a staple of powerlifting culture forever has been Chuck Taylors, Converse, yeah. Chucks, Flat Soul, and it's almost seen as, <laughs> I mean, you're, yeah, wearing a pair of high tops around the gym basically marks you out as a powerlifter usually, but you're, you've got some opinions on whether they're actually the best shoe for the job. So I, I think they're a pretty horrible shoe to, right, to, train, okay. to, to train with. Yes, I had been a Tuck Taylor user in the past. Yeah, yeah. And it's the same, I think people convince themselves that it's a, it's a flat shoe. Uh, and, or they try to convince themselves about the benefits of a Chuck Taylor, but it's not, essentially, it, it is not a flat shoe. If you actually look at the shoe carefully and you've laid it on a table, or mm -hmm. sat it on the table, and even with someone wearing it, you'll see that the top, the top of the toe, from the knuckles of the toe forward, that the toe actually starts to curve upward. Yeah, yeah. So that takes, that takes away a level of, or takes away some of your base of support. So there's a reason why a lot of people feel comfortable squatting in bare feet or lifting in bare feet mm. there's two things we have we can create a lot more we create a lot more stability uh, a lot of sensory feedback okay because yep. we can feel the earth sensory feedback allows the mind to know that it's on a stable and safe platform right so we end up having the ability to articulate the movements of and contraction of muscles around surrounding the ankle yeah a prevention or um, a poor sensory feedback can create stiffening of the ankle because the mind is trying to create stability. Now, how does this work in terms of of a converse shoe? So, if we look at the, let's look at the benefits between a barefoot and, a, and 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 how that compares to a converse shoe. So, we have a wider we have a, a wide base of support. We have flat feet because we have our toes. We have our toes on the floor. We have all points of contact that create stability. On the floor, and because of that, because we have a far more active foot, we're able to contract the muscles in our foot to create stability. Stability increases our ability to express power, and it increases our active mobility. Yeah. Meaning that we can move through greater ranges of movement. When we then put on a Chuck Taylor, Chuck Taylor shoe, a Chuck Taylor has a first off is a very narrow shoe. We all know. We yeah, all know yeah. that. So you're de already decreasing. Um, your base of support yep. on a shoe, and so that's number one. We're on a on a smaller platform, so we have to have more control over our center of mass. Uh, two, we lose sensory feedback because of this compression. We don't feel the earth on a greater surface of area on our foot, mm -hmm. right? So then we generally can become a bit more stiff, or our ex our ability to express power reduces. Yep. Number two, we next part is that. From the base of the big toe, the the shoe starts to invert. Now, this does not come natural to the foot. The we're supposed to be able to adduct the big toe in a position that stabilizes the arch of the foot. So, if we open, when we open the big, if you can you test this yourself. So, if you actually squat and you open out the big toe and apply force downward on the knee onto your foot. You'll find it harder to put. You'll, you'll you'll see the difference between a closed toe position and an open toe position. Is that in a closed toe position, your foot will immediately pronate, meaning it will start to roll inward. So we lose the ability to generate rotational torque. If we're internally rotating the foot, actually find it, finds it harder. Then it's a lot harder or near impossible for us to generate external rotational torque. Mm. So meaning driving the foot out, being able to generate power in an outward rotation force through the leg and through to the hip so because it's and then also pronation will create a collapse of the step of an ankle of the ankle so the stack of the ankle will start to cave inward mm -hmm. right? and generally everything else follows there's an upstream effect on from the foot so, so i remember you saying you said to me recently that you had a lifter one of your better lifters and you had found significant improvements in technique by was it her big toe oh, moved a centimeter or something less? Was it less than that? There's been I've had heaps of cases of this where a lot of it even right even this is the effect of the upstream effect of from the foot up. Yeah. Meaning that anything that happens with the foot will have upstream effects on the mechanics throughout the entire body. Right. And we can eliminate back pain a lot of the, not all the time. This is very mm -hmm. specific cases 
we've eliminated back pain by teaching them how to use their big toe. And it seems so weird mm. that something so far away from there is having a big impact. But the thing is, you look at physics, okay? Greater, great lever arms have a big impact on force. Yeah, yeah. Archimedes, Archimedes, Archimedes. I think it's Ar Archimedes. Archimedes. Yeah. Quote on that, give me a big enough lever, I can move the world. Right. And I use this, I like to use this quote because it gives the people of an understanding that what the, what, what distal effects have on proximal issues. Mm. So the foot will have a great impact on the hips and lower, and, and lower back. Um, I've had people with such significant dysfunctions in the squat when they first come to see me thinking that this is going to take a very long time to fix. But all I did is address, address mm. what they did with their toes. And it seemed like they are going to progress back to, to a back squat again within the next few weeks. Yeah. Like that quick, mm. um, that these have a, a now back to the topic at hand with the foot pronation. Yeah is that the big toe is a stabilizer of, of the arch of the foot. So when we have the, put on the converse shoe, it actually pushes the toe, pushes the toe inward right. because the foot will, after the knuckle, of the, after the knuckle of the big toe, the converse shoe will start to cave or start to invert. Yeah. So this not only now you're reducing, you're further reducing your base of support, um, but you're increasing, um, the ability to create, uh, to create a stable, stable platform yeah. and to maintain the strength required to to keep an arch you're removing a whole digit that creates contraction of those muscles in the foot yeah I'm, 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 like i'm trying to, i'm struggling to think of any shoe that allows you to spread your toes right yeah so mo most conventional shoes uh have the same have the same pattern have yeah, the same yeah. pattern some other a lot of other shoes are better than converse because converse will have a lot of shoes will have uh, a, a wide base of support but then would still cave in and and curve up at the top and that's yeah. pretty much every shoe so they come to a point and curve up at the top um converse has that as well as being super narrow mm. um, okay so then at the end we have the converse toes pointing up so you're you're rolling on your the balls of your foot with the with zero capacity to create any level of contraction in the foot to create stability yeah so it's like we're now balancing on on a dead piece of meat, they can't do have any contractile function. Right. right. And this leads to so many upstream issues. This is why people feel better in bare feet. Now, there are a lot of good shoes out there. Yeah, can. so I was gonna say, so I, I think one issue, like obviously you would have people train barefoot, but I, mean, I train at home, so it's no problem. But every time I've been into a commercial gym, I had this a few weeks ago. Mm -hmm. I was in a gym and it was just a general commercial gym. But even on the platform, like I had somebody come up to me saying, hey, you've got to put your trainers on. And I know they're terrified again, lawsuits for if you drop a weight on your toe or whatever. But Still um, hurts even if you have a shoe on. Fuck, I know, I know. I was like, even even on the platform, she was like, yeah, we have a... So what what do people do if, if they're in a training environment where they've got to wear a shoe? Like, well, what should they go for? Um, if they can wear socks, that still works really well. But <laughs> um, essentially you should invest in um, a form of barefoot shoe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And a lot of these shoes now are getting quite stylish mm -hmm. as well, so they are quite a functional shoe. To, I mean, in terms of socially functional shoe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so a lot, uh, what a lot of these shoes, the, the traits of some of these barefoot shoes is that you're looking for something that doesn't taper after the, call it the, foot, uh, or the big right, toe. Okay. They continue to spread and point towards the big toe rather than the middle. So leaving, the, leaving space for the big toe to open out. These shoes are just generally slightly wider at the top. Yep. All right, and, and, and some shoes stay wide or some shoes will start to narrow in coming towards the back of the foot. So almost like opposite mm. to it. So they're like kind of a little bit narrower near the um, bottom of the foot so that it stays on your foot. Now that's just more of a start, style thing. I go, I've got a shoe that's quite wide in general um, and then points to walk towards the big toe. Yeah. Not only that, they're very, they're very, very thin shoe, meaning that I can get a lot of feedback you when can I feel, still kind of feel the ground, right? Yeah. Yes. So the the shoe is very bend, very bendy. So I can roll it up into a cigar, my shoe. Um, but it's very, very durable. It's made of leather. And so not only that, my foot has still has its dexterity and still has um, sensory feedback. I can open my foot and I can use my toes to help basically articulate movement of the foot 
around its environment. So just simply wearing the shoe outside of, um, outside of training environment is going to train your foot to become stronger as well. Mm. So if we're dealing with a dysfunctional foot, again, this is a whole another topic. This is just a, Huge, a yeah. dig on Converse. Yeah. But essentially, these are the main reasons why the, con the Converse isn't a good shoe. Um, to mm -hmm. to train it, and there's a lot of people who will train bare feet and then come into competition. They'll wear Converse, so now they have now they're completely changing the mechanics of their mm. the mechanics of their squat. They have to change the way they squat because now they've got a very very narrow shoe. Where I tried to have a shoe that replicates the bare foot. Yeah, and essentially yeah. the bare foot is is oh I would say the best way best way to best way to train. Part of my ignorance here, but when it comes to competitions, do they allow barefoot lifting? No, they don't. Um, which is why you should invest yeah. into a, if you compete, invest into um, barefoot shoes. Yeah, because yeah, that's, that's a little thing. Yeah. I mean, we were talking about training intent and getting your routines in place and all the cues and stuff. Mm -hmm. Rocking up to a big lift when you're used to barefoot and having to wear a pair of trainers and everything feels different the feedback it's just going to throw you completely off right mm. like that, that's a big no no mm. sure and you're going to know you're, you're not and you know a lot of times you're not even going to know why yeah you're just, you're just not going to know why especially if you just throw it in into a competition and a lot of people don't notice because they'll continue to doing the exact same thing over and over again yeah. a lot of people I think have intuitively opted towards um, deadlift slippers um, they do deadlift slippers do move a lot which is why I don't like them too much my shoe that I wear the barefoot shoe has quite a grippy bottom, so yeah. I can grip to the floor. So, so that that's the that's the issue I found with the, if you wear pumps or whatever, like you you slip with within the shoe, yeah, um, and the sole doesn't move with the foot sometimes. So when mm -hmm. it's planted, like um, you can get your, the sole of your foot moving a few millimeters inward mm -hmm. relative to the sole, so you're completely off off balance there. Yeah, yeah. This is why the fitting of your shoe. Uh, should should matter and and probably we shouldn't have too much moving and shifting if yeah. we have a good solid base but again if it is slippery then you know we want to reduce that level of mm -hmm. error that we might have in our lifting so this is why i don't recommend converse shoes why i think they are a terrible shoe for powerlifting my recommendation my, i guess my number one recommendation is vivo barefoot yeah okay they both have um, socially functional shoes and good training shoes. Yeah, yeah, they look good. Yeah, yeah, I've had a look at the website before. Was it, uh, we had a guest on who recommended them. Senior, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Very good shoe. All right. Awesome. Cool.